We welcome you to Rice in progress along with Mark Jackson, Jason Horowitz. Happy to have you with us. A couple of minutes in, Western Kentucky's got a couple of shots at the layup. Take an early 4-0 lead in the sixth ever meeting between these two teams. Tavion Hollingsworth misses on the three. Rice wants to push the tempo. They want to run and gun in this building. They shoot the ball extraordinarily, extraordinarily well in this building. Western Kentucky's looking to slow it down this game. Young Rice team in the corner, Drew Peterson, one of the freshmen. Charles Bassey, one of the great freshmen in the country with his first board. Leads the league in double-doubles. Avante Beard in the end, one opportunity to go up 6-0. Take a look at the starting lineups. Lamonte Beard and Reed inserted in the lineup three games ago. It's made a huge difference for the Hilltoppers. Charles Bassey's averaging a double-double, one of just two freshmen in the country to do that. And for Rice, it's a team that likes to shoot a lot of threes and five freshmen that we're going to see tonight. Five freshmen is going to get playing time. They run a lot of pick and rolls. A lot of pick and rolls to try to get that three-point shot. All of is attacking the rim. And the wave off the free throw. Charles Bassey in the lane too early. So a lane violation. Western Kentucky has come out hot. Rice had a couple of turnovers. Chris Mullins, that's turnover number three. And it is Mullins with an S, not St. John's <laughs> legend, Chris Mullins. What about your keys to the game tonight, Mark? Keys to the game. Rest of Kentucky has to establish Bassey early. Rice has no one that can guard the big fella. Double-double for a reason. Force Rice off the three-point line. Make them finish around the rim over contested shots. And for Rice, you got to keep West Kentucky out of the paint. They don't want to shoot the three. They have a lot of great athletes that get to the rim and make them hit the threes. West Kentucky has to hit a three. They get it deep into the shot clock. Lamonte Beard kicks it out. Jared Savage for three, and it's a 9-0 advantage. Savage is the best three-point shooter from Remmer for his shooting shot. Likes to get it going, but it started with the dribble drive. On the drive, that is Quentin Melora Brown with the first points. Western Kentucky with that three from Jared Savage. Just became the fifth team all time with a three-pointer in at least a thousand consecutive games. It's a streak 32 years in the making for the Hilltoppers. Bryce is doing a good job with an aggressive double team to slow down Charles Bassey. How about back-to-back -back threes? There you go. But Tina don't like to shoot him. They sure hit him now. And that's one of the keys. Rice has to make them hit that three. And if they do that and Bassey get going, they're a tough team to stop. They're going to have to answer back with their own threes. Aiko Adams, he's a 39% three-point shooter. Rest of Kentucky is being very patient with the offense. Good box out by Quentin Malero Brown. He's a big body that can slow down Charles Bassey with his size. And he takes it right at Bassey. No foul call. Big shot is good. I don't know. Did he call that? Should he get three points? I didn't even call glass. But he'll take it. Adams with the response. So a slow start in this ballgame the first three minutes, and now everything is falling. <laughs> Rice shoots the ball very good. They jump, and a pick and roll sets everything up. They have great movement from all five guys. Bassey got great position. And Rice is not a big team. If the 6'11", 245-pound freshman gets in there, they're not going to stop him. Now, and look at this, how he established position. He buried him deep and finished without a dribble. Great start for the Hilltoppers on the road. Almost knocked out of bounds, up in the air. And it lands almost in the lap of James Harden, who's sitting courtside. Western Kentucky, 1,000 straight games with a three. And for those of you watching on CBSSports.com, our streaming coverage will conclude after the commercial break, but we'll continue with James Harden and company on CBS Sports Network. You can find us by going to CBSSportsNetwork.com slash channel finder. Thousand games with a three in a row. Western Kentucky joins that illustrious list.
Welcome back to Rice, along with Temple Hall of Famer Mark Jackson, Jason Orwitz. Happy to have you with us. Western Kentucky's jumped out seven of nine from the floor to take the 17-8 advantage. And Mark, all of this with an interim coach today in Mark Shue, because Rick Stansberry is dealing with a bulging disc in his back, so he's back at the team's hotel. And that was just decided a couple hours before the game. Yeah, speaking of Coach Shoe this morning, that shoot around, he was very prepared for this. He had the scout report, and he said, we're coming here to win this game. Mark Shue, who has not called a timeout in action since being a prep school coach in North Carolina 12 years ago. Binghamton, New Mexico, New Mexico State, some of the stops as an assistant until last year coming to Western Kentucky with Rick Stansberry. Not calling a timeout. He might have a running gun game. I'm looking forward to this. That's not what he told us during <laughs> shoot around this morning. Exactly. He said he's going to slow it down. Passy almost gave it away. Now they reset the shot clock. They said there was a change of possession. Rice is really doing for being productive on a double team on Bassey. He seemed to get out of And now they're going to stop it. Scott Perra was screaming on the far sideline. Now that is something they can look at at any point in the game. And the shot clock did reset. There definitely was not a change of possession. I agree with you 100%. Rice is really getting their hands on them balls from Bassey. He's having a tough time with the double teams. They bring it from all angles. Stop it for a moment. Also, extra 15, 20 seconds or so for the Hilltoppers. To their favor, they want to slow it up. And a bucket on the inside, nine points for Lamonte Beard, and that's what he had on Saturday when they beat UTEP. And the coach feels though he's been getting his, his sea legs back, and that's been helping them turn his season around. Well, he missed the first 12 games. He was academically ineligible for the first part of the season. So your starter at Buffalo started as a transfer last year, and it's a fourth-year junior. Savage it, off the mark, Bassey over the top, and that's a foul on the big man. Foul on the big man being overly aggressive, but it start off with Martin, number 10, doing a great job of boxing him out. And he's think the big fella's getting frustrated. They're dumb at me. He's having a few turnovers. And he's just really getting under his skin. It's hurting the team. So he'll go to the bench with the foul. They don't lack for size, though. When Bassey goes to the bench, Tolu Smith is a 6'10", 240-pound freshman. And comes off the bench. Delano Banton, another very good freshman. He's 6'8". Peyton Moore drills the three. And a foul underneath the basket. Jack Williams was hit to the floor. And so Rice will get the ball back in an opportunity for a five-point play. Yeah, Matt Horton was overly aggressive on that main shot fighting for it. He had the outside position, was trying to reestablish himself, but it cost him a foul. Good call by the official. He's the rest of the size. Six foot eleven, two hundred and thirty-five pound junior from Tuscaloosa. What about a turning point? Quentin Miller Brown, the patience. Let me tell you, big fella, I like that move. He's been getting very confident. Coach said that he's a pass-first bid from our post, but he's been getting confident lately with his offensive game, and he showed it right there. Well, Topper started this game on a 9-0 run. This young Rice team has responded well. There's the takeaway. Trey Murphy, another freshman to the rack. The three-point shooter making an effort on defense results in a steal in the basket. 9-2 run, a little more than two minutes into this. Timeout coming at the next stoppage. And Hollingsworth whistled for the travel. The fifth turnover for Western Kentucky. But the defense now turning to offense for Rice. The freshman gets his hand on the ball. He's a three-point shooter, but he also can finish at the rim. College basketball on CBS Sports Network, presented by Five Hour Energy. College basketball on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by the makers of Five Hour Energy. Get back to 100% by AT&T.
More for your thing. That's our thing. And by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Not sorry. Reese's. Now nobody playing better in the NBA this season than that man. The beard, James Harden, watching here in Houston. They don't play again till Saturday. The trade deadline going today, but not just because he is in Houston. James Harden has a special connection with this Rice program. Head coach of the Owls as they get it inside to tie it up with Robert Martin off the bench. Head coach of the Owls was his high school coach back yes. in California. Yes. At Artesia High School. Great bond. And then he also went on a coach at Arizona State and assisted there. Him and he said oh, they have a great bond. They talk to each other almost every single day via text. And that's good to have her in the program. We got the bearded one in the building. Man, that should bring some more people out here. And, they, <laughs> and, and he said, look, you know, it's great for our players. Some old teams have had some pickup games yeah. when he's around during the summer working out here at Rice. But as you said, it's a relationship that was strong in high school. Coach Perro went to Arizona State to work with Herb Sendek when James Harden was becoming a senior in high school. And he said, Coach, I'm going to follow you there. I like Arizona State, and I like the relationship we had. That bond, that bond was unbreakable. Coach Moody was in separate. He think he, he just went on how James started off the freshman and worked his way up, got his weight under control, got his body looking good. And he said he just developed as a player. Traveling called on Josh Parrish. I like when you asked Coach Parra this morning about James Harden as a high schooler. He yeah. said, was he always as good? He's like, no. As a yeah. freshman, he couldn't do anything. Stand in the corner and shoot. <laughs> he said he was a spot-up shooter who shot the ball from his kneecaps. That's how low he brought the ball now. And as a rookie, he averaged nine points. Now figure that out. And now look at it. That's just going to let you know you never can be. You have to always work to develop your game. Jay Gomer, the triple for Western Kentucky. Four of seven, hot shooting for both teams. Start this ball game. Interesting with both teams. Five turnovers and six turnovers. Playing in Rice's hand. Good finish by Martin. Who is the best? He has got most developed players his last summer. He was strictly a power forward. They worked on him a lot to change his shot, and it's really developed his game. Passy back off the bench. Splits the double team. To the floor and a jump ball of possession arrow back to the Owls. Pass, he split the double team. Good, good move, but I would have preferred to like to see him accept, accept the double team and find the open guy at the dunk back in to make it easier for your teammates or to ultimately make it easier for your team to get a win. Charles Bassey, five-star recruit, came to the United States from Nigeria when he was 14 years old. A couple of years in high school in San Antonio before going to Aspire Academy in Louisville. And he reclassified this yeah. summer. He was going to be part of the 2019 class. He reclassified for 2018 back in June and decided he's going to come to Western Kentucky. Along with Delano Bantam, he did the same thing. He reclassified up to come this year also. Two promising, promising young guys. Bantam is on the floor as well, number 20 for Western Kentucky. Good bounce pass, but at the feet. Pass into the floor. And another jump ball, it'll go back to Western Kentucky. Like the hustle and the fight by the two big fellas. Two biggest guys on the court on the first one down. Good help D by number 21 Owen. Look at the two big fellas. Oh, give a shoulder. Okay. Little football action in there. We'll take it. You know, Western Kentucky came into this season with a lot of hype. But Jack Williams coming back in the ball game. Preseason pick to win Conference USA. They made the NIT semifinals last year. And then, of course, when you add Bassey onto the roster, you expect big things, and they have. They've won at Arkansas. They beat Wisconsin at home when they were ranked in the top 15. They've had some struggles, though, in conference because they've had some roster turnover. Josh Anderson cleans it up, and they're back up by three. And a lot of that is because of the Monte Bearden wasn't eligible. And their coach Phillips thought he was doing point guard by committee. They had Bantam was starting off the point, and he said the older point guards got under his skin and it hurt the team. But now with Bearden back in, he thinks they're good to go. Murphy was fouled on the way up. It's on Jay Gomer. That is his first. Murphy, when you're going that lane, you can't spin. There's too much co congestion in that paint. You got to work with your hand to be able to boop out the guy. We call that two dribble crossover move to get that shot off.
Good on the first. The six foot seven freshman has been absolutely on a tear the last five games. 16 points a game is great. But Mark, when I tell you he has shot 20 of 35 from beyond the arc the last five games, he has become a dynamic scorer on a team that when they recruited him as a senior in high school, he was 6'4". He's almost 6'8 now. Yes, and he's still growing. What was interesting, though, what Coach said is that the assistant coaches didn't want to recruit him at first. They said he's a little too thin, a little too thin. And Coach said, listen, he can shoot that ball, and I think he's going to grow. And boy, was he right. This young fella is shooting the lights out. Worst case scenario, we get a six foot four shooter. Best case scenario, <laughs> we get a dominant large two guard. Exactly. Anderson on the drive. Murphy, the good defensive play. Young fella's all over the place. He's not just a shooter. Mullins. Now the size of Western Kentucky on the wing certainly an issue. There's Banton running the floor. The point guard being off the ball, running the floor, getting a left hand layup. Like it. Young fellas, take note. You don't always have to play on the ball to be effective. This is, this is what Wright's going to do. They're going to pick a roll for the entire shot clock until they find a shot they like. Which most of the time is a three. That's a step back for Aiko Adams. Third triple of the opening half for the junior out of Washington, D.C. Aiko Adams, he's going to let it rain, ladies and gentlemen. You know, we talk about teams getting better, and Rice had seven wins last year. It's not just development of the five freshmen. Aiko Adams with a 33% three-point shooter last year. He's over 40% now with the game today. These players really got in the gym this summer and developed their games. Coach said these are self-started players. That's a mistake, and that's a hammer and a three-point opportunity. Western Kentucky was ninth in the nation last year in dunks for the season. Now Western Kentucky's at the line, but Aiko Adams keeping Rice in it. The shooter's going to find his mark. You got him, Haney. You got to find him, because if not, this is what happened. Three. Tomorrow night, starting at 6.30 Eastern, CBS Sports Network hitting the ice, back-to-back -back college hockey action, starting with Omaha battling Miami, followed by top-ranked St. Cloud State taking on Colorado College, only on a 24-hour home. CBS Sports. Frozen Four this year in Buffalo. Feels like that's fitting. <laughs> yes, very true. 28-25 here in Houston, Western Kentucky has led throughout. We have had a tie in this ball game, but the Hilltoppers without their head coach, if you're just joining us, Rick Stansberry not here tonight. He is in Houston, but he didn't run shoot around today, dealing with a bulging disc in his back. He is back at the team hotel. And they will travel to take on North Texas on Saturday as part of the Texas Swing, or at least this part of the Texas Swinging Conference USA. Western Kentucky's defense is really coming along. West Kentucky has 16 points off a turnover with only to Rice's four. Yeah, eight turnovers in this ballgame. Which, when you think about the fact they're shooting almost 60%, you take that away and you think you got to leave. Good look in the corner. Robert Martin out of a good half off the bench. He's got seven. Chase that rebound down, save, save it to Murphy, and Murphy found him right back. Good job not giving up on a play. Bryce. Savage with the answer. The transfer from Austin P, who grew up right down the street from Western Kentucky. He can put in 20 in any game. He's done that four times this year. Jack Williams, the grand transfer from Pacific at the freshman Tolu Smith. He was working on two moves that they had shoot around. The three-pointer and that right-hand hook. When he gets in that lane, he looks to drop that in. Another three from Savage. I don't know about you. <laughs> this afternoon and this morning at practices, I wasn't expecting a first half near 50s. I wasn't either. These two teams. We're not getting that. They were doing working on defense, but the way this game is going, I love this tempo for Rice. Williams the turnaround. Hollingsworth cleans it up. Well, listen, when you got James Harden in attendance <laughs> and he scores 50 by himself on a regular basis, 
He follows suits. Tolu Smith gets position, and he's followed by Trey Murphy. Martin chasing down a rebound. Save to Murphy the third. Look at it. Jump right back. Hands ready to shoot that ball. Nothing but net. Did you ever care when you ran over your own teammate on the bench? Not really. <laughs> the funny thing is, some of them will move out the way. <laughs> Free throw good for Tolu Smith. Tolu Smith, an interesting prospect. In high school, he's a 6'4 guard. And got a major growth spurt his junior, his senior year. And now he's 6'10. But they said he has very good fundamentals because he grew up handling the ball. Junior year, high school in Mississippi. He was going to transfer to another high school in Mississippi. Was not going to be eligible. Family had some extended family in Hawaii. So he went to Kahuku High School out in Hawaii. Yeah, that's not bad. No. <laughs> Murphy on the drive, up and under! Murphy was working one-on-one -on -one against the coaches today, working on his game to get to the rim. We know he's a legitimate shooter, but he's really adding peace to his game like getting to the rim. Whoa! Wave it off! Highlight reel nonetheless, but an offensive foul on Josh Anderson. Bring it home! Bring it home, big fella! Great pick, and look where he took off from. Send it in, but don't count it. <laughs> look where he took off from. Ooh, we. Now, you're impressed about the athleticism, and we should be, but it was the correct call. It was a great call. Good job by that freshman taking that charge, sitting there, knowing he's going to be in highlight reel. Yeah, Melora Brown absolutely had his feet outside of the restricted area, and now he's fouled by Tolu Smith. Good That's job. Sixth foul on the Hilltoppers. Good job, uh, Rice, rewarding the big fella. You took their charge. Let's reward you on the other end. You got to feed the big dog some time. Highly entertaining opening half. Western Kentucky is doing a good job with a freshman Mullins. Keeping him out the lane, which is his specialty. Murphy late in the shot clock. And the rebound from Smith. Bassey still on the bench. Smith fouled and counted. They're getting good minutes from their other freshman big man. Yes, they are. Mark Martin was a second late on that. When you're away from the ball, you see a pick and roll. You have to establish, be there sooner. You have to be there before that man catches the ball. Because the majority of the time, if you're moving when he catches it, it's an automatic foul. Got to be there. Monte Bearden back in the starting lineup. Already seven assists mm. in this opening half for Lamonte Bearden. And coach said we're turning our season around because he has gotten back in our system, gotten the sea legs under him, and he's making this team move. Inside, Savage knocked it out of bounds with 4-0-3 to go here in the opening half. Good roll by Quinton Malero. Good roll. And you see that pass, it was thrown to him high so he can catch a finish. West Kentucky defender got a hand on it, but it was a pretty good pass. Bassey back on the floor, manning the paint for Western Kentucky. Mullins left wide open. West Kentucky's doing a good job pushing the ball, but Rice is doing a better job getting back on D, not giving fast breaks. Well, you said they had to control Bassey. They have done that. Yes. Couple of points, just one rebound for the fantastic freshman. And that's something else they've done well. Aiko Adams, four for four beyond the arc. Back to Rice. After the timeout, 38 35, the Owls using the deep ball. The Owls is number one in the league with three points made in percentage. That's what they do. Got to run them off the line.
38 35 great first half here at Rice Hilltoppers have the lead and that's without Charles Bassey leading scorer leading rebounder really doing much of anything tonight he's our five hour energy player profile now that might just be for tonight throughout the season Mark Jackson he's done a lot of work <laughs> he has he's he's played against some really good big men and pretty much had his had his way with all of them this team flows and plays better when he gets established but with that being said Rice is doing a good job doubling but the big fella's still young only 18 years old now he was a five star recruit top 10 in the world and again James Harden is on hand here tonight They've never had at Western Kentucky 35 draft picks. They have never had a one and done player. And so many expect that Charles Bassey's going to the NBA after this year. We'll find out if that is in fact the case. But as Adams draws his fifth three of the first half, he certainly looks the part. He looks the part. He's down to, he plays like today's big man. He's a pick and roll kind of guy. And he establishes position really deep. And as the lowest pole I've seen him going at was 24, and I've seen about three or four mock drafts. Traveling call on Tolu Smith. Well, coming up on AT&T at the half, take a look at the win earlier here on CBS Sports Network with Houston getting the road win at UCF. Gonzaga's playing San Francisco. It's all coming up AT&T at the half. Brett Stover, Swin Cash, Steve Lapis, Seth Davis back in our New York City studios. Mullins on the dish. Williams wanted to shoot it. Bryce is doing an extraordinary job giving that ball from one side up. But West Kentucky with three freshmen on the floor, defense has been a lot better. Three seconds on the shot clock. Stays with Rice. The Owls trailed 9-0 early. They missed their first three shots. They had three turnovers. They've got an opportunity to take the lead, and they'll take a timeout. We'll step aside with them in a... Even ball game here in Houston. Out of the timeout, even ball game. Scott Perry used his use it or lose it. How about the threes tonight for Rice? Rice is shooting the lights out the ball throughout the season tonight, seven for twelve. And watch this out of bounds, please. Rice gets good slips to the rim that sets up the three-point shooters popping. Why not to the guy who has made five? Adams for number six. That's his first miss tonight. Great contest for Hollywood. Anderson on the drive again. He's another one of those top 100 recruits that have gone to Bowling Green, Kentucky. This year as a sophomore, and Williams throws it out of bounds. Anderson has the ability to put the ball on the floor. The freshman have to, has a better angle to cut him off. But help D has to come. You now can't take one dribble to get to the room. So if anyone gets beat on one dribble, it's hard for help to come. So Murphy has to do a better job moving his feet. 16 points for Western Kentucky off of nine Rice turnovers. Good slip, but an offensive foul. Mullins this time drawing it on Tolu Smith, his second. Mullins was in the right position at the right time. He seen a week the pick and roll going on one side of the floor, so he was there a step early, and he got the charge. Good job by the freshman. Williams, the hook. That's a foul on Rice going after the rebound. It's on Drew Peterson, freshman from Illinois. Peterson is not shooting the ball, and he's struggling. He's shooting the ball well, and he's struggling a little bit with his confidence. One thing he does very well while he keeps getting playing time is he's a tremendous rebounder for a guard. He also looks a lot like Mark Zuckerberg. I agree with you 100%. 100%. <laughs> I did ask him that earlier today. He gets that. He's like, you know, only the last couple of months, never in high school. So when you go from Illinois to Houston, people don't know you. Exactly. Anderson cleans up the loose ball. He's in double figures with 10. Anderson is a live body. He's driving, he's rebounding, he's just a live body. Bryce is struggling to guard him. Balance scoring for the Hilltoppers. Three different players with at least nine. Peterson lost it, but he's fouled. Milano Banton with his first. One and one time. 
Mullins is really trying to get in the lane. Western Kentucky has to get credit because they prevent Rice's number one penetrator from getting in that lane. Good job by Anderson and the rest of the Western Kentucky team. Joe Peterson, good shooter. Came in all state last year in Illinois. 40% three-point shooter in high school, but again, he has struggled with his shot, particularly since Conference USA has begun. And his stroke is good. He made a lot in practice. Coach is just waiting for it to come through, and, and they believe that it'll happen. You know, I believe a lot of that when it comes to freshman practice time. Practice time helps you get ready for the season. And then sometimes it takes somebody who's a little bit slower to get it. But once they do, they develop because the practice should be hard in the games. And for Rice, that's what it is. Hilltopper's largest lead has been 10. Bass is getting real deep position. But West Kentucky's doing a good job getting to the rim. Good box out, too, by the Owls. Cannot hold for the last shot, but a 10 second differential. But again, an opportunity on this side of the floor to take their first lead. Three, could have got a two for one. Peterson left it short, follows his own miss. Great find, Chris Mullins, and we're tied. Freshman and freshman, Peterson showing why he's a good rebounder. Timeout taken, Western Kentucky. Set up the last play of the opening half. We'll step away for 30 seconds. A timeout taken by Mark Shu again interim coach tonight with Rick Stansbury back at the team hotel dealing with a bulging disc or multiple bulging discs so the 38 year old from Queens New York the interim coach tonight by the way if you're wondering about the record win or loss it goes on Stansbury either way <laughs> he said he was okay with that <laughs> good to know good to know no pressure coach no pressure who are you going to last 20 seconds I'm going to want to pick a roll with Bassey because his dive game, when he dives, he, he collapses the defense and it opens up the floor. Wait, West Kentucky shooting the ball. Why not? I'm talking about wasting some time. They, did, <laughs> they get a solid 50 feet without taking a tick off the clock. Flare screen. Take a roll. Down to three. Hollingsworth got to go to work. Inside the arc, a deep two to end the half. Davion Hollingsworth ends it like they started it. Hot both sides in the opening 20 minutes. Both teams really getting it going. Using Bassey, he's collapsed the team. And this, shooting over the team and hitting the buzzer beater. Both teams shooting 57% or better from the floor in the opening half. And we got a two-point game at the break. After the commercial, it's Brent Stover, Steve Lapis, Swing Cash, Seth Davis. They're back in New York, coming up with AT&T at the half. You're watching college basketball on CBS Sports Network. It's the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Basketball on CBS Sports Network presented by Five Hour Energies. We're getting set for the start of the second half. Western Kentucky leading Rice by a pair. So welcome you back courtside. Jason Horowitz, Temple Hall of Famer, Mark Jackson. Hopefully the second half can be anything <laughs> like the first half. Yeah. That was fun, partner. Up and down. Teams combined for 13 made triples. Up and down. You know, played in Rice favor, but West Kentucky defense has been outstanding, and that's why I was with this way. Lamonte Bearden back in the starting lineup for now a third straight game. The fifth-year senior, nine points, but seven assists and no turnovers. Transition. The team is running with him. He's making the correct play. Rice is collapsing the zone to offense. Defense, and he's finding his teammates. Big first half, balanced scoring for Western Kentucky on the other side. Career high tying five made triples by Aiko Adams. Aiko Adams has been on fire. He's been hovering around that three point. You know, sometimes you feel when you got it. He knows he has today. And Wright's doing a good job getting him open. I never had that experience of knowing when you have it, but he certainly did. Hit his first five triples, five of the seven that Rice hit in the opening half. As we take a look at the game summary brought to you by AT&T. Again, hot shooting both ways. Good field goal percentage. The only problem, T 
teams combined for 19 turnovers. Yeah. Other than that, we'd be looking at a 55-55 game. <laughs> I agree with you. The turnovers have been bad on both sides of the floor, but West Kentucky has been doing a good job of playing the passing lanes because they know Rice likes to shoot the three. They need to run him off the three-point and Rice, on the other hand, got to get Mullins going. They need his penetration. Right out of the shoot, Adams, deep three. And the tap back for the offensive board. Peterson to the hole, and it's blocked. Josh Anderson, mask and all. In transition, Savage, no. Well, the pace is there. Pace is still there. <laughs> good defensive, uh, good defensive block, less of fast break. They just, just, just didn't finish on the other end. This game, it looks like it's not slowing down. I remember, coach from West Kentucky did not want to run a race in their home court. But Mark Shu, who's acting filling in tonight for Rick Stansberry, is out with a back injury. Set it, shoot around. And slow it down, take some time. Passy picks up his second foul. And that's been another story tonight. Western Kentucky has done all of this with Charles Bassey having two points. Yes. And just three rebounds. Quincy Malero Brown, is, his confidence is soaring right here. Look at this, up feet. Look at this. The little subtle up feet gets the future first round pick off his feet, picks up a foul. This freshman is really developing under coach's eyes. They're doing a good job developing him. Malora Brown, high school in Virginia. Lorton, Virginia. Rice offered him after his sophomore year of high school. He had some other interest later on in his career as he grew and got a little bit bigger and better. But he said Rice was with me the whole way. They were the first one to offer, and I was ready to go. Exactly. And he's gained about 20 pounds since coming on campus and his show. Torchy's tacos. <laughs> Savage no Bassey over the back. That's number three on the freshman. Once again, Malor Brown boxing out. Bassey doesn't know how to handle that. Instead of jumping, you see the shot going up. You have to establish position before the shot is released. So right there, you, as a young kid, you're trying to use your athletics and to jump over people. You can't do that in college basketball. You have to move them with your body, then elevate. What, what has Rice done to take Charles Bassey out of this ballgame? The double teams have been extraordinary, and he's getting frustrated and getting some bonehead fouls like that. Jumping over the back. Once again, Malera Brown, his confidence, his confidence. He is scoring on that low post. He won't shoot low jump shots, but he knows that his bread is buttered and he's going to it. And he has given Rice its first lead of the evening. In the corner, Bearden. West Kentucky's been very patient using his size. Traveling call down low. Tolu Smith again, Melora Brown on the defensive end, but it was the offensive end that gave him the lead. Step the double team, split it. You can't let him split it. Look at him just running the final little running hook, getting it in for two. Hilltoppers had an early 10-point lead, three and a half minutes into the ball game. Rice has been battling back the rest of the way. Rice does an excellent job reversing the ball from one side of the floor to the other. West Kentucky will get immediate pick and roll and look for some dive action. Savage hits three triples in the first half. Here, nice dish to Anderson right at the hole. Takes the hit and scores. They can't keep Anderson out the lane. He's a big guard with a lot of wiggle. Wiggle need a one-on-one -on -one ability to get to the rim. He averages 11, he's got 12. Here, nice step through off the glass. Transition, Western Kentucky didn't want to run today, but they sure doing a good job of transition getting buckets. That looked a little James Harden-esque. It really did. He didn't draw the foul though. James got to end one. <laughs> James also might have taken a third step. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Peterson inside the arc. Again, his struggles with his shot continue, but a second chance. So all the shots that were falling in the first 20 minutes, same shots, they're just not going down. I really believe Peterson should have shot that. He should have shot that first one. His confidence has to come back up because he's a shooter. Oh! Alley oop to Savage! And who assisted? Bearden. 
Aurora Brown trailing. He stopped on a dime to pop from 16. And he's not a jump shooter, ladies and gentlemen. That's not what he wants to do. But when you're feeling it, you're feeling it. He's got 10 points. Good beat by Keith Peterson on Anderson. And the kick ball, so the shot clock will reset to 20. We hope that, I mean, this is the highlight of the night. Look at him. quick release. Savage gets up and he finishes. Good eye by Bearden. Good timing. It's so easy to see why Western Kentucky was the preseason pick to win Conference USA. Athleticism, the shooting ability. Bassey down low, even though he's struggling tonight, they have a pinch. Smith's got to be careful. He's got two fouls as well with Bassey on the bench with three. And Williams is playing good defense. So what you just see from Williams' shot, it looks a little um, orthodox, and he's a streaky shooter. Once he knocks one down, he continues to put him in. Look how fast that ball moves from one side of the field to the other. Smith back outside. Four on the ticker, and it's ripped away. Harris on the drive. He's fouled that chance for the lead. Giving Western Kentucky a little dose of their own medicine. Western Kentucky has gotten the flash, but they're even with Rice. Savage elevating and finishing through the hoop with the dunk. This weekend is a new beginning. Football continues with players getting a second chance to showcase some talent. Welcome to the Alliance, Saturday on CBS Sports. I want to wish our friend Rick Neuheisel, coach of the Arizona Hotshots, good luck. They'll open up against Salt Lake City, our buddy, our colleague from CBS Sports and CBS Sports Network, who is back on the sidelines when they get going on Sunday. Here it's an even ball game. And Josh Paris gives Rice the lead for the second time tonight. Price's bench is up 18 to 9 over West Kentucky. Leading away is Robert Martin. Bassey on the bench with three fouls. Step back three off from Bearden. It's tapped around. Now I say that because he's the highlighted player, but he has struggled tonight. He has struggled, and that's due because of Rice's defense. They're frustrating a the young big fella. They bring in double teams. They boxing him out. He doesn't know how to work through that yet. He's so young, just turned 18 in the middle of his freshman season. Hollingsworth whistled for his first foul. And again, his season low is five. He's one of two freshmen in the country, averaging a double double, nearly 15 points a game. More than 10 rebounds a game, but again tonight just two and three rebounds. Struggling. Struggling, but the one there is a big, the one thing you can always do to get going is offensive rebound. You have to depend on receiving the ball in the post. Offensive rebound helps you get going, helps the team. Martin back off the bench. He had a couple of fouls. Adams, his first bucket inside the arc. He's got 17 tonight. Good cut by Adams and Martin driving. The impatient, not forcing up a bad shot, find his teammates cutting to the basket. Who's going to be the go to guy for the Hilltoppers here in the second half? But again, we're going to travel there. Rice has really picked up his perimeter defense, expanded it a little bit. And they're forcing deep threes. Western Kentucky made six of ten. In the opening half, beyond the arc, they're 0 of 3 here in the second half. Now, you know what Rice wants to do. They want to get a pick and roll set. But when your big fellas work it down low, got to give it to them. Accepting the double team. Good pivot work. Knocked out of bounds. Melora Brown, six points here in the second half. A six foot nine, 205 pound freshman. As Anderson comes back into the ball game, the mask, a broken nose about 10 days ago. Started wearing the mask last week in practice. But he fouled it up with 18 points, so he's okay with it. Yeah. <laughs> I had to wear that mask a little bit. It, it cuts off the peripheral a little bit. Laura Brown fights it up. 
Tapped around. Parrish, no. One more. Malora Brown. in their largest lead. The 50 50 balls that West Kentucky is getting to start the game seem to be going in Rice's favor. West Kentucky's in a lot of perimeter action, not really getting up all in the paint, not collapsing the defense. They got to get in by drive or by low post feed. Anderson, the deep triple. And they're going to get Bassey back onto the floor at the next whistle. There's no flow on the offense. None at all. Passing that ball around the three-point line is not going to get you a good shot. you got to get into the lane. Collapse the D. Didn't let it open up. Little tap off. Adams, that's going to be an offensive foul. And he knew it. He pushed off with the off arm. Good D by all his worth. Moving his feet, staying in front of the offensive player. Good D. He's putting his ball on the floor. Right hand, great. good job moving your feet. And selling it. you got to sell it. Bassey back on the floor for Western Kentucky. And as you said, maybe it's an offensive rebound, maybe it's a block shot, anything yes. to get going now that his team is trailing. But just his presence alone will collapse the defense and open up more perimeter shooting. And he was open under the hoop. He rolled to the basket and wanted the ball. And he got big. Once he rolled, he went under that rim and got big. So the defense collapsed. That's why Bearden was open on the far right. But you've got to give him a good pass. Put it in the numbers. Now Rice has succeeded in its goal that was stated this afternoon. Can we frustrate him? Can we hold him? Can we make someone else beat us interior? And they have. Paris the floater. He's got five off the bench. It's an 11 0 run. Price is really getting what they want on offense. They're really running their offense plays nice. Hard off the glass. Now five minutes without a point for the Hilltoppers. Parrish right down the lane. Timeout. It's all Rice here in the second half. Momentum has changed. Rice getting the rebound, pushing the ball, and finishing at the other end. West Kentucky has to get back on D to stay in this game. Rice on a 13-0 run, and unlike the first half, they're not doing it beyond the arc. They're really not. Their defense is creating offense with the steal and the end one. They're doing a good job being patient and using the elements that the game has given them. You come into this game thinking if Rice is going to win, they're going to hit from beyond the arc. And they did in the first half, but points off the bench, 22 of them. And Mark, they are even with Rice, excuse me, with Western Kentucky in points in the paint. They really are, which is which is strange because the big guy, Bassey, he presents a problem in there, but Rice is really getting points in transition, and West Kentucky has no answer for him. He gets a touch right out of the timeout, and he's fouled. Now, yeah, Malone Brown did his job early. He pushed him out away from the rim. You can't follow him up there. Force him to shoot a contested jump shot. You did your dirty work early. Martin was whistled for his third foul. The last time out of team timeout. This is the media timeout. We'll step aside. Now Western Kentucky hasn't scored in five minutes. We go to the free throw line. Mark Jackson, let's revisit your keys to this ball game. And uh, when, when you looked at established Bassey, they haven't done that, but it didn't hurt them in the first half. It didn't hurt them in the first half because they was hitting everything from the wing. But now it's going to crush time, see the score. Bassey has to get going. And that don't have to be a post They can be off his rebound. Force Rice to shoot. Uh, uh, they got to shoot the, the score over contested jump shot. But Rice is getting buckets in transition. And the rest of Kentucky is 28 points in the paint. We know they're going to do that. Rice has to do a better job now than the score. And Rice has to hit day three, seven for 16 for game. But second half, they they're 0 for 3. Bass is a good free throw shooter. The big man's a 75% free throw shooter, or nearly. And you mentioned not hitting threes. We had 13 made threes in the first half. The teams are a combined 0 of 9 from beyond the arc here in the second half. Now, who does that favor? That favors Rice, because this is their home court, and eventually they're going to turn around. 
Yeah, you wouldn't think so because they do rely on the three-pointer. They yeah. make almost 10 a game in conference play. Now West Kentucky switching up their D, coming out and extend the 2-3 zone. And Keita has get that ball in the middle of the floor and shrink the defense. Deep into the shot clock. Parrish, seven points in the second half. Add two more. His entire scoring output here in the first nine minutes of the second half. Big fella, Bassett got to be patient when you see that ball in the box. Don't shoot the jump shot. Take your time and go to work in there. Adams in transition. A career high. Six made triples for Aiko Adams. Transition three-pointers. Rice doing a good job finding the hot shooter, and he's coming through. Better job off Bassey dribbling out that double team. Panton with the drive. And again, they got the players that can take it off the wing. They do. They really do. And Vance being 6'8 point guard, able to shoot over top of the defender. Good defense. Bassey stood his ground. The roll. Miller Brown. Good roll, but you got to finish. Anton lost it. Adams right down the lane, and he's tied up. And it's off of Western Kentucky. Getting in the lane once again in transition. Rice is running that ball down West Kentucky's back. They got to get back and communicate. Look at West Kentucky defenders. No one's communicating. No one's in the paint. They got to get in there, collapse that defense, and communicate. The best defense talk. Now it's too early in the game for them to go look at the monitor, but I'm not sure that was off of Western Kentucky. They like a jump off. Let's call a jump ball on that. Off the inbounds. Williams, the hook shot. Second chance for Murphy. He's such a good shooter. But he is human. He actually hits two pointers as well. <laughs> Equals the largest lead of the ball game for Rice. Last possession, West Kentucky did a good job. Big man backs it out. His mechanics is there. He has it in his arsenal. They need him to get going. He doesn't take a lot of them, but Bassey now 9 of 16 from beyond the arc on the season. Murphy trying to answer. Look at Bassey run that floor. Hollingsworth pulls up. And again, if you've never seen Jack Williams, you might think that that's a shot that he was double clutching or wasn't. That is his jump shot. He only shoots that way from three. Two pointers, he doesn't shoot that way. He doesn't have that, that little flick in his game. Rice is trying to slow the pit tempo up, but I really like him pushing the ball against West Kentucky. Why? Because West Kentucky is not getting back and finding a guy. Rice can really get some points in that transition. Laura Brown, he has not backed down from Bassey at all tonight. Maybe a bad shot. Bassey, a little bit of patience, but I'll tell you, if he had kept going, I think he'd have got a foul on Bassey. Bassey's a little too quick to jump. I get you're a freshman. You know who you're going against. We talked with the Rice players this afternoon. They said all week long, they know who's here. They, they know James Harden is here. They know who the scouts are here to see. That's true. But Laura Brown does not care. He has gotten confidence the last five to six games and is really trying to score. Now, when Rice going small, Williams will stretch that floor. Can Bassey get out there and contest those three-pointers? Martin back on the floor with three fouls. Mullins off the inbounds. Back to an 11-point advantage. Mullins only one for eight on the game. The team's leading score. West Kentucky's doing a good job keeping him out the paint, which is his favorite thing to do. Panton runs over Adams, offensive foul. Second on the freshman from Toronto. The Owls looking to get to win number 10 and playing well here at home in front of a crowd that's looking for an upset.
here on College Basketball on CBS Sports Network, presented by Five Hour Energy. Well, when you hang around a Big Five Hall of Famer and an eight-year NBA vet, you want to know what's in his head. So let's find out. Mark Jackson, what, what is in the questions of the day? My question of the day, the Rice Owls have five fabulous freshmen. Can they get, they can use these quality minutes to develop for the future? And Coach said, these are the guys I want to change the program with And ACC. Can Duke prevail with four freshman starters? Is Zion and Barrett and Cam Reddish going to carry this team? Me personally, I think this is the year Virginia gets further with Hunter being the player he is. And then say, who will be the number one pick? Anybody speaking Zion Williamson? But I'm putting my money on Moran, John Moran from Murray State. If you have not seen him, look him up, ladies and gentlemen. He's Russell Westbrook with a jumper. Listen, look him up. So that's the only one of the questions you answered. <laughs> <laughs> Will, well, will answer, Duke prevail with no, four No, I answered three. that. I think Virginia will come out with the victory this year and win the conference. And they play I Saturday think Hunter, game. they need a score, a go-to score. They can score for them multi facets. I think Deontay Hunter is the one for them, and he would neutralize Duke in their freshman. As for Rice, they think they've got the nucleus to be really yes. good. Now, they already have more wins than they had all of last year. But they think next season, dump down to Jack Williams. When you think that that's the only player they're going to lose, exactly. with the exception, you know, you never know about transfers. But when you think about the freshmen, including Chris Mullins, for this team, they might be picked towards the top three or four next year in conference. And they got three other good freshmen coming in the league in this game for next season. They got three other signed good freshmen. So they rebuild. But that's another one. Again, Trey Murphy, when they recruited him out of Durham, North Carolina, his dad works at a clinic near Duke University. He was 6'4". He's almost 6'8 now. He it's a six, bonus. He was 6'4", 150-something pounds. The assistant coach, like, Coach, you sure you want to recruit this kid? He's a little too frail. Coach said he can shoot the ball. We can develop him, and he's grown three inches, four inches. He's gained 20 pounds. Coach said he'd like to see another 25 pounds on him before his senior year, but his development is there. He said he can always shoot the ball. And again, the steps for Rice. Two years ago with Coach Mike Rhodes, who's now at VCU. This team 23 and 12. They went to the CBI. He leaves for VCU. Scott Parrott takes over. Last year, they seven wins. They lost a lot of players to transfer the last couple of years. Some grad transfers, some just normal attrition. But the building is there, and he thinks this is a School that's ready to explode here in Conference USA. Exactly. Off the turnover, the alley oop again. Now that was called by West Kentucky's off back in a 1 3 1 half court press offense, defense, and it caught Rice by surprise. Western Kentucky had 44 in the first half. They're looking for a change of pace, and this zone, can, this zone press can do that for them. Extra pass, Banton, quick hands. Not on the shot clock for the Owls. Active hands gets the zone. Throw it up, and look at Savage elevating and finishing at the hoop. Six seconds, Martin needs to go. What was a 10-point lead for the Hilltoppers early? Now an 11-point deficit. Anderson drives it to freshman. Offensive board, Murphy stuck with it. The freshman with the block over the back. Mullins out to Martin, the open three. Good shot. Chris Mullins getting in the lane, creating a shot for his teammate. Got to knock it down. Here and inside the Bassey, good position. He didn't get his feet set. No, good thought though. I like the way he established position, tried to go up strong, just lost the ball on the way up. Hollingsworth pulls up the two. It's amazing. First half, Western Kentucky shot 64%. Rice shot 55%. Neither team now 50% for the game. Exactly, and West Kentucky, they, they couldn't shoot the ball to three, particularly well leading into this game, but they were hot, and sometimes they give you false hope. Their specialty is they use these athletic guards to get to the rim. Murphy, another good look, just not falling. Bryce now one of nine beyond the arc here in the second half. 
The defense has kept him in his game. They're doing a good job communicating and not letting West Kentucky finish around the room. Here Murphy stuck with him. 24% from the floor in the second half for the Hilltoppers. Murphy might have got away with a foul. My opinion, definitely did. Rice going to get into a pick and roll and look for the weak side guy being open. If Mullins could get in his lane. Mullins the dish. Melora Brown, no. Fancy might have gotten a piece of that. He definitely did. Anderson has Savage open. Got to get your head up. Off the glass and a timeout. So it's down to nine. Anderson has 14. Can he help get Western Kentucky back in? Timeout on the floor. 4.26 to go. Saturday starting at noon Eastern. CBS Sports Network back on the hardwood. Some non-stop hoop action starting at noon Eastern with Providence looking to weather St. John's team that just won at Marquette. And later at six, it's number six, Nevada, trying to avenge its only loss of the season in New Mexico. Creighton and Seton Hall will round out the quintuple header. That is five straight games Saturday right here on CBS Sports Network. Last night on CBS Sports Network, Villanova in overtime knocked off Creighton. Still knocked. unbeaten in conference play. Still unbeaten. He lost Jalen Brunson and found a way to win. Coach Rice still has a good unit. He does. St. John started off hot. They slipped to third place in conference. My former teammate Chris Mullen, the original Chris Mullen. Bassey fighting for it. He was poked in the eye. Bassey up to seven rebounds, still working on the double-double. Find a way to get yourself going. Rice is doing an extraordinary job not letting him receive the ball. And if he does, they're bringing a double. So you got to find a way to rebound. That's the other Chris, Chris Mullins. Mullins. Now this has <laughs> an S on it, Chris Mullins. One guy, Mullins. <laughs> but a very, very good freshman here at Rice. Very good freshman. Two different players. This Chris Mullins like to get in the lane and drive. My former teammate, my comrade, he's a three-point sniper. Your former teammate might make the NCAA tournament for the first time as a head coach Happy in his form. fourth year at St. John's. Every form. Mullins uh, a gym rat. I bet you he pre scrimmages with the guys. <laughs> <laughs> Probably still the best shooter. Oh, for sure. And if you lost, you still lying say you won. <laughs> Adams back on the floor for Rice. He has had a sensational ball game. 20 points, six made threes, a career high for the junior for DC. And talking about efficient, seven for nine from the field, take that all day. Bassey hits the second, eight points for the freshman to go along with eight rebounds. So as much of a struggle as he has had, he's still approaching a 12th double-double on the season. West Kentucky is changing it up with this 1-3-1 half-court press. Bryce is handling it a lot better being patient, but what that, that takes time off the shot clock. Gets Rice off the offense. There's the deal from Bassey. Nice. Rice led by 13 here in the second half. Anderson blocks. Anderson's a one-man record crew. He's all over the place. If he's not penetrating for buckets, he's found a way to get offensive rebounds. But that last possession was initiated by Bassey getting it still and pushing the rock. And then now starting to feel the momentum too. That was a perfect opportunity for Bassey to duck in. Hollingsworth, wow, what a move. What a move. Martin got a little too happy. Oh. Heardon almost got the steal. West Kentucky's falling back in that 1-3-1 again, looking to change the pace. Look at this up there. Come to a two-foot stop. Look at that. Young people, you watching. Two-foot jump stop. Rice scoreless drought, approaching five minutes and an offensive foul. Charging on Josh Parrish. The man with the broken nose took it. And this is all too familiar for Scott Parra. Just a couple weeks ago, they had a 16-point lead against North Texas with about seven and a half to go. They lost that game by one. 
They had a 13-point lead here tonight with seven and a half to go. Yeah. West Kentucky tempo. They changed the defense with the 1-3-1 one, one and counter court rights off guard. And they're struggling trying to get buckets. They're making them use too much of the shot clock. They really got to look for basket, and he's doing a good job. Hollingsworth, it rolls out. That last possession, I thought they had Bassey on the post. Even if he didn't shoot it, just get it down there, collapse the right defense, and get overlooking the opposite side. Now, rest of Kentucky shooting contested jump shots. And the pace is slowed down for both sides, but particularly here on this side. Adams, another offensive foul. That's the second time he's gone right into Lamonte Bearden. This time it was Hollingsworth stepping in, sticking his chin in there again. He's anticipating. Look, he thought he had a beat the big jump rate. Oh, that was a legitimate good call. Good call. Adams got to keep that left forearm down. Can't argue with that. That's a good call. Coach Paris trying. <laughs> when you watch the video, sometimes like, ah, okay, you got it. Bassey. Position down low. Double figure scoring down to a four point lead inside of two minutes to play. Footwork and patience. You catch that ball though deep. Young people do not rush. You got three seconds to go to work. And a steal. Can Anderson gain control? Keeps it off the glass. It's inside down to two. And a timeout taken by Rice. Momentum changer. Started at West Kentucky's 1 3 1 zone press. Bassey with the position. Look at the footwork. Up, oh, Kevin McHale. A la Kevin McHale. Look at this. Little shot upstate and step through. And the defense by West Kentucky is initiating offense. Anderson had a break, lost it, but was smart enough and patient enough to pick it up and finish at the rim. Be careful getting the taunting, Anderson. You don't need that now. Right, and Mark, you had mentioned that turnovers for Rice, the change of pace defensively for Western Kentucky was forcing problems for Rice. Four turnovers, the last four possessions, and 16 in the ball game for the hours. Yes, and I'll say this, Mullins has been on the bench the last couple of minutes because he haven't got it going offensively. But I like Mullins when he has the ball in his hands. Why? Because he gets into the lane. He gets in the lane. Rice can get kind of stagnant just past that ball with a three-point line. So how do you get this young team back? They had a 13-point lead six minutes ago. I think you have to get the ball into the paint. Not necessarily scoring, but you got to collapse Western Kentucky's defense. They're spread out. So you got to get in the lane, collapse, and they get an easy shot. And look who's back in the game. Mullins look for him to get the ball drive it collapse the D and watch how it opens up for the rest of the team He's the team's leading scorer on the season nearly 13 points a game just four tonight on two of eight shooting He's got the ball Dumps it down low and he's fouled Lamonte Bearden got him on the arm not in the bonus yet Just the sixth on Western Kentucky, but you see what happened Mullins probing off that pick and roll getting lane collapsing the defense and finding the big fella below Brown rolling Don't change it go right in the pick and roll but Anderson in that defense a lot of dribbling, good bounce pass, it's blocked. Passy with five on the shot clock, the deep three for Murphy. It's nothing. Now Charles Bassey might have had a rough first 30 minutes, but he is having a massive effect down the stretch. On both ends of the floor. Good job. He contested the guard driving and got up to block the shot by the center. for the lead and a timeout Western Kentucky is fought all the way back from down 13 it started with defense 
on the other end and got a good look by Savage. A three-point shoot the other end. Back screen, Savage pop. Nothing but nets. Fourth made triple of the night for Jared Savage, the transfer from Austin P. And Mark, that is, at least for the moment, the capper of a 14-0 run for the Hilltoppers. It really is, but what has what the Hilltoppers do? It changed the pace with the 1-3-1, and Wright struggled with it. Well, and how about the job by interim coach Mark Shue? Rick Stansberry out tonight, dealing with bulging discs in his back, back at the team hotel. Mark Shue ran the shoot around this morning. He's facing a 13-point deficit, and again, he's making the calls. He never has to make the calls. He never has. Has a call timeouts to win school? Uh, prep, school, school. Prep, school. prep school coaching I mean, in North Carolina 12 years ago. But they were prepared. The team was going a little bit too fast today. They were shooting around. He said, oh, slow down, fellas. Let's walk through, get it right, then let's pick up the speed. So he's in command of his team to start the game off, and that's what helped get him in his lead. Putting a resume reel together. <laughs> but can they close it out? Up by one, inside of a minute to play. And there's just no movement. No Adams. movement. They need to get pick and roll, get into the lane. He's been the go-to guy. Top shot. Malora Brown knocked it out of bounds. Now what happened there? Rice keeping the ball out of the three-point line. Mullins did a good job last two possessions. Get in the paint, collapse in the defense. You can't settle for that. Now we're inside of two minutes, so they can go to the monitor and see if that ball was, in fact, last touched by Rice, and that's what the officials are going to do. Pat Adams, along with Keith Kimball, are over at the monitor with Antonio Petty. But again, Western Kentucky, who shot so well in the first half, went a solid 10, 12 minutes. But they couldn't hit anything. And all of a sudden, the defensive pressure has led to a lead. But who did this go off of? They're like Malora Brown who maybe had the last touch of the ball. But then he's trying to argue. Oh, maybe not. Oh, here's a good view. Swipes his arm, his left arm, as it's going out of bounds. Now he touched it there. Yeah. Now look for Western Kentucky to use Bassey maybe as a decoy. Thank you. Use Bass as a decoy, get him set up and pick a roll and dive. Have somebody coming up so he's going to be very deep. Now there's eight seconds differential. Game clock, shot clock. Do you play it out, go for the steal, or do you start fouling? I'm going to play it out. I'm going to play it out because Rice defense has been good, but not last couple of possessions. A better communication and maybe come around with the ball. Hollingsworth, the two, well off the mark, and Parrish the rebound. Shot clock turned off. Look who wants the ball. Rice has a timeout, not taking it. Inside of 10 seconds. Mullins trying to get space. He's tied up and he's fouled. Josh Anderson whistled for the foul with 5.6 to play. I thought Anderson might have had all ball. I thought he had all ball. But Mullins, you know you want the ball in Mullins' hands. He's going to find a way to get into the paint. By Anderson. You think that could have been a no call? 71% shooter for the tie. And now the chance for the lead. This for the lead. No. No timeouts for the Hilltoppers. Got to go. Anderson, half-court shot for the win. And we're going to overtime in Houston. Hilltoppers had a 10-point lead. Rice had a 13-point lead. But we're back where we started. Five more minutes of basketball when we return here on CBS Sports Network. Western Kentucky ended the last 7.36 on a 14 to 1 run. But it was the one free throw from Chris Mullins to send us to overtime. 
And again, one point for Rice over the final 736, but it came with 5.6 on the clock. Yes, it did. 0-0 zero, zero now to start this new game. And Rice seems to be trying to get back in, but West Kentucky started their defense, got them back in this game and got their lead back. We had over to you. Hilltoppers last Thursday went to overtime, beat UTSA 96-88. Rice this year lost in overtime to UC Santa Barbara back in December. And again, both these teams in the middle of Conference USA, 4 through 12 that are all separate and at least coming into the night by two games. Anderson, the floater. Good D by Rice, good communication. Let's see if West Kentucky can continue with the defense. They got him back in this game. Rice hasn't made a shot in over eight minutes of game time. Mullins, open. Good work. That's a way to stop a drought. It is. The freshman to end the regular regulation, one of the ball in his hands, and who scores the first bucket but the same freshman, Chris Mullins. Bassey had a good dunk in, but Rice is putting good ball pressure, so he couldn't get in the ball. Savage gave him the lead at the end of regulation and ties it up early in overtime. Both teams getting hot to start it. 19 for Jared Savage, five made triples. Really surprised Rice has not gone back to Malor Brown. I thought he did a good job on Bassey. He's on the bench at the moment, Williams. No foul called in transition. Bearden, Hollingsworth. Mullins got back to force the tough shot. And another quick look. Got to capitalize on them turnovers. Mullins right at Bassey, he's fouled, and Chris Mullins will go to the free throw line. That's the fourth on Charles Bassey. If you're a big fella there, you gotta make it, you gotta do two, two, th one of two things. Either contest it or move out the way, but you can't stand in no man's land and turn your back. Good job by Chris Mullins attacking the big fella. The big fella didn't, he was in no man's land. He didn't know, should I go? You gotta go. You gotta either contest it or move out the way. Mullins split the pair. Right at the end of regulation. On a season 70 almost 71% from the free throw line. This is put it count. OT, you gotta put him in. But I like his aggression. And you know, Rice on the years is 68% free throw shooting team. But in the last five minutes or overtime, that number goes up to 74%. Now that hasn't helped tonight. Splits the pair again. Rice in front by one. West Kentucky going to look. Look at the thing. It's a slip action on Savage. Have him slip into the room. Here in the spin move in the floater. 13 for Lamonte Bearden. And the officials stop play. Delay a game on West Kentucky. Got to leave that ball on. go through the net. That's the warning. One win West Kentucky. Go back to that 1-3-1 one, one press, press uh, half-court press. They have it so far in overtime, but I'll see him coming back eventually. Got to get into the paint, Rice. Mullins pulls it back out. Made on the shot clock. The freshman going to work. Good drive. It rolls off. Anderson to the ground. And Western Kentucky will slow it down. They did a good job getting into the paint. Did not finish, but that's the way to make the defense collapse. Get into the lane. West Kentucky got to put Bass in some kind of pick and roll and get him diving. There it was, Williams covered it up. Two minutes to go in overtime. Bassey for three. He made one earlier tonight. 
And that's what happened when you're big, when they're not finding you on them duck ends, you, you sort to shoot those threes. I think with Bassey's in the bottom of the pick and roll, they got to turn that corner and attack him. Make him on his feet, maybe get a fifth foul on him, get him out the game. No rhythm on the offense. Rice takes a timeout. 1.42 to go in overtime. James Harden and the Rockets don't play again until Saturday, so he's got nowhere to go. <laughs> he overtime here coach. in Houston. <laughs> Key, he's supporting his coach. I love the bond they have. But he's watching. <laughs> he wants to see who's doing what. I'm pretty sure that's Russell Westbrook. Exactly. Gotcha. <laughs> Looks like he's doing some film study. They are playing the Thunder on Saturday night. Oh, okay. Who say the band one, not just about offense? He prepares. Looking at all the trade rumors or the action. Trade deadline ended today. Big story here in Houston the trade of Dylan Ennis away from the Rockets. It's going to help them 76ers. They did a big trade with Toby as uh, Tobias Harris and Big Bob. Listen, Bobon, I love the big fella. For the Clippers, I love the big fella. As for this one, 142 to go. Western Kentucky up one. Out of the timeout, Rice basketball. The offense for the better part of the last 10 minutes has been stagnant. The Owls have one made shot in 10 minutes of action. How are you getting going here in the last 102 seconds? Now, there's no secret. Okay, they got Malone Brown back in there. There's no secret they like to shoot the three, but they have to get into the paint. They're passing the ball around the three-point line too much. Look for Malone Brown to get involved in pick and rolls and look for Mullins. Get in the lane creating for himself or others. Now Mullins drew the foul. That's what he does. The young fella is tremendous. He's mentally tough. I mean, that's you give me. Your father was a, a former a Division One quarterback. <laughs> His dad, Charles, quarterback in Memphis. So the ninth foul on Western Kentucky, and a one and one. But he has split the pair each of the last two trips. Agree. But when you get into the foul line, it's like a boxer in the ring. You're hitting the team with body blows. You're stopping the bleeding, stopping the clock. And when you're down, you need that. He earns the bonus. Listen, Rice has five freshmen. They're in the regulations, and now in overtime, who, who hands is the ball in? The freshmen. That's the confidence that Coach has on them. Hits them both. Now, that being said, it's the three upperclassmen who are on the floor with two freshmen. Yes. A okay. cat and mouse game that Bearden's played to get it across half court. He's at least saved three minutes of the game by that alone. <laughs> I mean, come on. He's in like five times. He's got 11 assists tonight. Make it 12 and the hammer. Josh Anderson for the second time tonight with a poster. And this time, ladies and gentlemen, it was a blocking foul. And one. My goodness. He was even higher on this one. Oh, he was higher on this one. Well, Laura Brown's feet were definitely inside the restricting arc. Anderson, they can't keep him off the lane, ladies and gentlemen. This man is a two ferocious dunks. You can't control it. complete the three-point play. So with the highlight, it's still just a one-point game. Adams leaves it for Melora Brown. Bassey swats it away. Murphy for three. Offensive rebound. Rice is going to take this back out. Rice has to hustle. They're out hustling West Kentucky. But Baskets on the box, you gotta clean up. Troy's gotta clean up. The Owls do have a timeout. Now they're gonna go to work. Mullins, good defense from Anderson. About a four second differential. And they got a foul. And they finally foul Hollingsworth. 
Mullins getting to the rim. Good D by Anderson. Went up with two hands, blocked that shot. But once again, who was behind him? Bassey. So if he didn't get that block, Bassey was cleaning it up. Three blocks tonight for Charles Bassey. 52 on the season. One and one for Tavion Hollingsworth, the sophomore from Lexington, Kentucky. First trip to the line tonight. Seventy-eight percent free throw shooter. Clutch time. Hits them both. And a timeout taken by the Hilltoppers. They use their final timeout with a three-point lead. How about the job by Mark Shoot and I taking over for Rick Stansberry? Great job. He had, like I said, the shoot around, he had control over this team. He had the man that presence to know, hey, slow it down. Let's be efficient. Let's think, let's think before we act. Let's be smart. He's doing a good job. Now they'll take on North Texas, one of the top teams in Conference USA on Saturday. The next Thursday, we'll be there in Bowling Green for the rivalry with Middle Tennessee. Now remember, the end of Conference USA, this is new this season. They're going to take the teams at the top, they'll play each other. Then the middle of the pack, they'll play each other. The last four games of conference play have not been determined. That's new this year. They won't be determined until after February 16th. So you want to get to that top group of five teams and then get those four games. Don't worry about that later. What does Scott Perra do here to get this offense going? Do you go for three with 27.8 to play? I think if you get a quick, a quick bucket, you, you get it and then foul. But I really think West Texas will come out of a 1-3-1 zone. And I really believe, I really believe they're going to try to go for the three. That's the thing that turns you off They get a quick one, they will. They worked on this and shoot around this morning. Now you got to be smart. They haven't had a look, but now Adams is open. The deep three for the tie! Oh, my! Career high for Seven seconds. You got to get to You got to go. Okay. No go to timeouts. Clock. Bearden for the win! Slammed home to wave it off! Offensive goaltending. It was in the cylinder with .3 on the clock. Now they're going to go to the monitor to make sure that the time is correct. Good drive. Was it going in? Yeah, it was going in. When you're jumping jack like Bassy, sometimes you can't help it but to grab it above the rim. It's absolutely on the cylinder. Yeah, it is. Good call. Now the question is how much time should be left for Rice? Hey, you got to forget that. Next play. Next play. If you Charles Bassey, you got to forget that. Go to the next play. Don't dwell on that because that can hurt you on the other end. You need a big stop here. Think .5. Think about .5. You can see the clock here. It's when the whistle blows to wave it off. It's about right. Maybe .4, .5. Yeah. Again, important. Because if you have .5 on the clock, you can catch and shoot. Exactly. I'm going to say .5. I will put someone on the ball. And they have gone up two tenths of a second. So they can catch and shoot. And Rice does have a timeout if Scott Perro wants to use it. They're not going to put anyone on the ball. The inbounds, it's knocked away, and we're going to double overtime. How about the shot by Aiko Adams to send this game to a second extra session? That was James Harden range. He shot that from beyond the NBA three line. And the confidence, he was shooting it good early, kind of got slowed down the second half, but stepped up when it counted. We got two, I repeat, two OTs. You know, for a couple of teams that struggled for about 10 minutes of game action, they made some big shots. Look at the range on it. 
the confidence, the ability to put it down. Adams has been big. Look at this. And the reason why he was left open, it was um, uh, they didn't communicate. But they said, I'm not going to challenge that. He's all the way out there. But you didn't challenge it. Look what happens. He made his first five threes. They got Marshall coming to town on Saturday. They're excited about the defending Conference USA Tournament champs. But again, for a team that's inexperienced, getting all the points they can from a young core, it's this game that's important. They had a 13-point lead. They blew a 13-point lead. How do they keep responding? And I think we're seeing a resounding, I'm pretty impressed. Yes, uh, the coach has a lot to do with that. Coach is trusted these freshmen. Mullins is coming through. Adams is coming through. The seniors, I mean, this team is, is overall, they're learning on the fly. What's the best way to get training? All the job training. And these freshmen from Rice is having that today. Now, Bassey, four fouls. Can he stay out of foul trouble and still be impactful in five minutes of overtime play? He's one rebound shy of his 12th double-double on the season. He's top 20 in the country in that category. But their offense changed when he came back on the floor. Just because of the space and the attention. He's got the ball. Good job giving it back out. Extra pass, Bearden the open man, and the lead early in double overtime. How did that help? How did that happen? Bass accepted the double team, escape, dribble, create space, and find this guard with a good pass. Ten made threes tonight for the Hilltoppers. West Kentucky's playing tremendous defense on Rice's pick and rolls. But Laura Brown thinks he has to attack Bassey. You have to attack Bassey, get him in foul trouble. You did it early, why go away from him? You got the confidence. Don't get shot in overtime, keep going at him. Anderson's had highlight reel dunks. Savage has had big threes. Lamonte Bearden, though, the all-around game. 16 points, 11 assists for the fifth-year senior from Milwaukee. Hollingsworth got deep. He's not used to being in there. Wasn't sure what to do with it. And Murphy's 6'8 arms. Made him shoot a bad shot. Williams got the smaller defender on him. Maybe look at him. Foot inside the arc. Deep two. Couple of Rice players are down on the floor. And Anderson pushes. Again, drives the hoop. Lays it up. Puts it off the glass. Anderson is so athletic. His ability, he went to the basket and double clutched. 20 points tonight for Josh Anderson. Mullers need to turn that corner, get into the lane. Force West Kentucky to play defense. Bassey collects his 10th rebound. He's got the double double. And now Western Kentucky can slow it down. You can feel all the momentum on the side of the visitors. But it's still plenty of time, two and a half minutes. They need to stop here one play at a time. Don't worry about the next possession. Bryce has to communicate and come up with a rebound. Bearden on the drive. Again, the defense, just like you were talking about. Adams on the push. Good job, contestant Murphy. Good look, Mullins blocked. Bassey starts the fast break. Three on one, back to Bassey, lays it off the glass too strong. And he falls into the camera crew, he's down behind the play. Bryce has to take advantage of it. And Mullins is fouled with Bassey into the cheerleaders. Bassey has to flush that home. Great block. That block initiated the offense. Mullins is the toy he gets. Listen, you blocked it, I'm coming right back at you. He puts pressure on the defense getting into that lane. Fouls on Anderson, that's his fourth. So he and Bassey both with four fouls. 
And remember, Mullins had a chance in regulation with 5.6 on the clock, two free throws down one. To put Rice in front, he hit the first. He missed the second. Hits them both. 13 for Chris Mullins. Coach told him to slow down, get the play, get a bass involved in the pick and roll, get him diving, collapsing the D. Look for Savage getting a shot here. Instead, it's Anderson on the drive again, and he's fouled. Robert Martin came down with his arm, and that's his fourth. Good call. Good job by Anderson attacking the closeout. He's so athletic. And into the defender, good call. Martin, good foul. Don't give up the easy two. And a correction, that is the fifth on Robert Martin. So he has fouled out of this ball game. Are they going to come with the young shooter or are they come with the senior? Looks like the answer is both. Williams back on the floor. And Trey Murphy also back on the floor. Now, regardless how with these free throws, Ennis is doing a good job on Mullins one on one. Where they put the ball in Mullins' hand to go pick a roll, where they put it in Adams' hands. Because Mullins was doing a good job last possession attacking the closeouts. Got a rebound, his foul shot. Hits them both. Five-point game, timeout Western Kentucky. 22 tonight for Josh Anderson. Lead the way for balanced Hilltoppers offense. Four players in double figures. So five-point game. Mark Rice had a 70 to 57 lead. 7.30 to go in the ballgame. They scored one point, the remaining 7.30 of regulation. They've hit some big shots here in overtime. Is Aiko Adams once again the go-to guy? I think he is, but one thing is, it's curious to see what happens. What got Western Kentucky back in this game was that 1-3-1. He switched the defense up and it slowed Rice down. They didn't know what to do. So we were interested to see if they don't come out in that. But on the other hand, no matter what happens, Rice has to get in the lane. They can't just swing the ball back forth across the three-point line. They got to use a pick and roll, get in the lane, find the, the weak side guy for the open three, or maybe Mullins finishes at the room. But to over. answer your question, Adams has been playing extraordinary. He might end up the shot. Now he's got seven made threes tonight. Reminder, inside college basketball is coming up as soon as we're done here in Houston. Brent Stover and the gang will wrap up this one, plus the night here in College Hoops. It started on CBS Sports Network with Houston winning on the road at UCF. They'll wrap up the evening when we're done. A lot of capable shooters on the floor. Rice is a good three-point shooting team. They have struggled second half in an overtime. West Kentucky comes out in a 2-3 spread of zone. Changed the look. Adams got the three. The deep one again. Pass, he snags it out of the air. Out of his area. He went and got that rebound. Inside of a minute. Pick and roll. He has him sealed. Didn't give it to him. Anderson on the drive. Gets it back to on the clock. Anderson had Bassey with a deep seal. Got to get the big fella the ball there. Rice has got to hurry. Adams takes the three. High off the rim. And Malora Brown is fouled. So two shots coming for the six foot nine freshman from Virginia. Lamonte Bearden went over the back. He's got high, got his knees in his back though. Third foul called on Bearden. Melora Brown is not a good free throw shooter. 
40 percent. Well, Lord Brown has come through today with 12 points and I think that's his 10th rebound, maybe a double double. Correction, 11 rebound. Second free throw is good. Four point game. And a quick foul. Parrish whistled for his second. And this is seven, oh, close to 72% from the free throw line. But no matter how good you shoot, 22 seconds left in the double overtime, that might skew them numbers just a little. He has certainly put on an athletic performance, a display of high flying material here. 23 for Josh Anderson. 14 in the second half in overtime. Now whether he hits this or not, two possession game regardless. Look for Rice to drop that ball one side of the floor and look to the kick to the opposite baseline. Baseline drop, baseline drift. And now you got to go fast. Now you got to get a three. Mullins into the lane. Bassey with his fifth block. He's just patrolled the paint the entire second half. Yes, he has. His springs in his legs. He's extraordinary at shot, block, shot blocking. His timing is good. And he, get, he remember, he's been playing both overtimes with four fouls. Confident young man. Savage connects, makes it a three-point, uh, three-possession game. And Mark, at least for the moment, it looks like Western Kentucky is going to get out of here with their sixth win in seven games. And why does that? Because Bearden. Bearden's been healthy. He's been on the court getting his sea legs back, and this team is flourishing with him in control. And Williams is fouled. Mark Shue coaching tonight for the injured Rick Again, dealing with the bulging discs in his back. Back at the team hotel, didn't make the trip from Bowling Green. Pain was just too much, was with the doctors this afternoon. And this was a Hilltoppers team that was down by 13 with 7.36 to go in the ball game. Agree, and their defense, their defense got them back in the game. They made the run, they got active, they used their long athleticism, and Rice struggled passing the ball around the perimeter. And again, he said it was going to be a collaborative effort with Nikita Johnson, Hensi Oriental, their other two assistant coaches on the staff. But whoever has been saying, hey, we're doing this defensively, it's been the right strength because they held a, what was a very hot shooting Rice team for the first 33 minutes to basically nothing in terms of the last, what would now be almost 15 minutes of game action. They really turned the tide with their defensive pressure. The scout report was on the money. Once Rice kind of cooled off, West Kentucky is able to establish their self on the other end. Five seconds left, six point lead. The game's still not over. Adams one last three on a career night. It falls short and a valiant effort by Rice, but Mark Shue as the interim coach tonight is going to walk out of Houston with a win, sending Western Kentucky to seven and four in conference play. And again, the goal is to get into that top five to have the better games when they start making those bonus picks for the last few. West Kentucky defense started their run. Left here with a victory because of that. Good job, Coach Shue. 92-85 the final. Western Kentucky the win. Now for Mark Jackson and our entire CBS crew, I'm Jason Horowitz. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Let's send you back to Brent Stover, Steve Lapis, Swin Cash, Seth Davis. Back in New York, guys.